All right. Yes, sir. How did what she was doing fail? Cause she went out not knowing where she was going. Faith is action. She had faith that she could, if she went out there and asked, that she was going to receive. She used to call to my house and pitch her her in the hospital and say to her daughter. Yeah, I mean, she was a calling person. I used to let her sweep my floor at the office until one day she go, I can't do it today, I, but I want, can I have my $20 and I'll come back tomorrow? <laughs> Because at least I respected her working and not stealing my stuff. You know? She cleaned up all the crap. She didn't care. That's faith. She didn't care. That's when you want to know about yourself like Dorothy needed crack. The door's going to go, whoo, come on in, baby. But so many times we say we don't want to live a certain way while we keep doing it. That's really not what we want. We're blowing smoke up our own butts. Does that make any sense? But it, faith is not religious. Oh, it's religious, but it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just how do you employ it? And what is that which you have? What is your hope? What's going to answer your problem, your question, your... You know? Are you going to get what you're looking for? Hmm? Pretty much. So... Y'all ever heard of a guy named, what's his name, Fibonacci, he's an Italian guy? Came up with, um, it's part of the patterns of, I think how those, what do they call it, the, the formulas in nature where you have repeating numbers. Y'all you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, just believe me. Yeah. <laughs> it's how things grow. And, or if you ever look at, fractals and see how patterns repeat all up in the macrocosmic and microcosmic. Anyway, um, he came up with a set of formulas and you, we used to see it when I was a boy on the, they'd do the stock market on the news. And it'd be something like this. You know, you ever seen those things? Yeah. Because the stock market has nothing to do necessarily with uh, a rational, linear kind of money thing. The stock market is all emotional, and it tracks emotional decisions that people make, right? I think it's all BS, but because the folks running they know what's going on, so they got to always get their money before. Anyway, um, but Fibonacci figured out or somebody figured out based on what he did that after a growth spurt there's always a correction. And they talk about corrections in the stock market, right? And then there'll be another little spurt and another correction and another spurt and another correction and if they hang in there long enough there'll be another big growth spurt. You know, all this is... Need huh? And after all that you shouldn't need to correct the next one but there's something wrong with it too. Yeah, because we all, we live knowing part and it's all, gonna, it's all partial. All of it's going to be done away with. Except faith, hope, and love, right? You know, if you, if you all would watch, if somebody would probably do that with the tomato plants, if you start measuring them, you'll see there's a little bit of growth and then a limb will get bad and fall off and then there'll be a spurt and then, I mean, it's kind of how nature does from what I understand. Now, if we're basing how we're doing on our feelings, we're going to get screwed up because sometimes we wake up and feel bad, even when we're doing right. And sometimes when we're doing wrong, we feel great. All right? Um, I remember I, growing up in the Baptist church, I didn't feel like God loved me until I come down front and cried. But that had more to do with my relationship with my father who... He and I didn't feel good unless he'd beat my ass. Right? <laughs> Had very little to do with God, but, you know. So, so, so Matt, have you been to rehab before? Sir. You've been to rehab before? One time. One time? Okay. And then you went to jail, or you went to jail? I went to once? rehab 11 years ago. Then I went to jail in 2014. Oh, where did you go to rehab? 
leaky house. A leaky house. And did you have some progress? Was the progress made there? Yeah, I was there for a year. And you lived a happy, generally happy, productive life or whatever? Yeah, I was fine for a good while. Uh, and then you got out and... Yeah, I got out. I was playing for five years. And uh, started using it again. And what got you to jail? Uh, stealing stuff. Okay. So you was asking, seeking, and knocking, right? Uh-huh. You was asking, seeking, and knocking. Yeah. Huh? More the knocking part yeah. <laughs> than the seek, the asking. <laughs> <laughs> Give me them damn weed eaters. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys want crack bad to steal copper out of walls now? Oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> right? <laughs> Seems like a job would be easier than that crap. But anyway, all right. How many of y'all been here for a week or two? Okay. How many's been here for a month? Or going on three months? Okay. You remember when? Um, is it somebody come in lately and didn't make it a week? Or two weeks? Okay. They were experiencing that same internal pressure you were during those first two weeks. All right? And couldn't take it, so they had to go. All right? I just want to pot in the room. Or whatever, yeah. Couldn't make your bed. Yeah, I'm making a bed. It's hard. It's hard. Go on. My experience is kind of, I'll be honest, I'm really enjoying those first two weeks I've been here. Excellent. But I'm beginning to doubt that I'll enjoy the next uh, 10. Cool. <laughs> and I, I mean, I would hope you don't enjoy it. That's not supposed to be fun. You know, I'm beginning to wonder whether we're going patience and uh, working back out there. I would and it may be that you're older, more mature, you've been beat up more than other folks, so I don't know, you know. Um, but, well, it's very similar because after about two weeks, you start, or a day, however long that day lasts, do I really want to be here? It's the same stuff. It's just not as unpleasant, maybe, for you. Process. It, 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 I'm not going to get any more out of it. I don't know what I got. Might I not be through it? Whatever I'm going to get out of it, that would be the question I think I'm It kind of depends on you. Because yeah. if you think you know everything, then you're retarded. <laughs> Sorry? Then that would be retarded. You know. But that thing that you got that you're wanting to challenge and stuff, that may be a place for you to look. Because you're very well defended in your ego. Yeah. And that's what keeps you stuck. You know. I don't need these dumb fuckers, I don't need nothing from them. That's stupid. Not that you're stupid, I'm saying that kind of logic is... Re that, that that yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, but what, however it might look for you in the first week or two, there will be some tension that you'll either decide to stay in that tension or run away. <coughs> okay. Well, I've decided I'm going to stay. Cool. Cool. Um, and if you stay in that tension long enough, and you can run away lots of different ways, but you can even stay here and run away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and hide and bullshit your way through it. And at the end of 90 days, I got my, I did turn this point t-shirt and then they pat you on the back and dear Lord Jesus, y'all get around the circle, help him, Lord Jesus, when he goes out. And all that same stuff that happened. Um, but if you hang it, because the issue is hanging in the tension. And, and holding maybe even op opposing ideas together for a while. Has anybody ever had the temptation to go, well, he's stupid, I ain't listening to him. Or he knows everything. Don't. I don't know everything but God, hell. You know? Um, but if you stay in that tension, there'll be a growth spurt. You had a growth spurt at the Aletheia house. Okay? Right? Um, 
and then there'll be a correction after. Has anybody had your first experience with the Pentecostals at Bethel? Mm-hmm. And they, and you felt like you fell out or something, or and they put some oil on your head, or whatever. And you're like, yes, I finally figured God out. You know what I'm talking about? Or you were in here, or you were in doing some meditation, and you had this insight that you'd never had before, and you just flooded with endorphins. You know what I'm talking about? And then three days later, you want to commit suicide. Because there's a correction, because that piece of information was not total. It was important, but it was not total, and there's still room to work. Um, but if you hang into there, there'll be another little spurt, and another little spurt, and if you hang in there longer, there'll be another growth spurt that you had nothing to do with. Your job is hang, staying in attention, not jumping this way or that way. It is when those feelings come at you that make me, I'm pissed off today, you go, you learn to go. And let those feelings wash over you and you start finding that place in you where you can observe yourself being angry. And you go, what's that about? Right? And then there'll be a place where you're observing yourself, observing yourself, and you're going, who the hell is that? I didn't even know it was all back there. You know? Because it's the anxiety that keeps us jumping and blah, 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 blah. Now, you went to jail and you learned some stuff in jail? <coughs> yeah, you wipe your own piss up and stuff, right? Yeah. Right? Keep your stuff clean and yeah. had to be hard and, you know, Burr. Right? You had to learn that kind of stuff. And um, it was great. And then there was another correction, and you come to turning point for some reason. Why'd you come? Did I ask you? Why did I come? Uh, I wasn't court ordered. I came because I knew if I got out of jail, I would make other start. Okay. Yeah. Is that. But you, have you felt like down since you've been here? Down. Like it's all back to square one? No. Um, mm-hmm. um, oh. no, I've, I've been in a lot better place. Okay. But when your first question was something about that, though. Wasn't it? Yeah. How do I feel like I'm just having to start yeah, over all the time? I'm having the feelings like you're back to where you were, but then it's like, like you just said, it's like you keep pushing through it, you know, just keep focused, and then eventually push through it, and then you're... Because the thing is, all of these down cycles feel exactly the same. Right. Or at least they're very similar. But that's not reality, the feeling. Because being down here is a very different thing than being down there in reality. And our emotional cycles will come and go. But until we learn to kind of step back out of our emotional cycles, they're going to always rule us. And even when we think we got it going on good, brother, Tom, wasn't it? There'll arise something in us that makes us feel dissatisfied. And we'll call it, we don't really attend to that or try to figure out what that's about. We just go, I'm bored, I'm going to call my crackhead friend. You know. And we try to uh, make the boredom go away rather than engaging the boredom and trying to figure out what the boredom's trying to teach me. What would it be trying to teach you? That the things we're doing are not satisfying. Time for a change. Make some changes. Get a hobby, do something. Something. Or it may be that I need to understand that I'm more than my feelings. Which I think was a more profound thing, more than just go do something different. Nothing wrong with doing something different, you know. But the more profound doing something different is figuring out who I am in God. 
what indeed is a human being, what is a soul? Why is it that quiet is weird? You know? Right? But all of this stuff here is a wonderful opportunity to have like a virtual reality experience. You know, the people that hack you off ought to be most interesting. Even if they're stupid. Because that's generating energy in, in you as opposed to somebody that you don't pay much attention to. Why is that? Why, what's that energy about? You know, more times than not, I've found that when people are getting on my nerves, it has more to do with me than them. You know, and what I might accuse other folks of, especially if you find yourself doing that a lot, accusing people of this, that, and the other, uh, it may be because I'm like that in some way. And I'm projecting all my stuff onto them. And I'm judging, and I'm, but it, but what I'm doing is pushing them away and, and finding myself in a more righteous position in my mind. And it short short circuits me needing to fix myself because I'm better than them. And fixing myself is not even the right way to say it, because the farmer plants the seed, but it's not the farmer that makes it grow. It's God that makes it grow. And God will make you grow. You can't. You can't get your ass tight enough to be righteous. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's the most, probably one of the most dangerous positions of an ego that could ever be in. Try to be a good boy. Try to be selfish. Because what we call selfish uh, is really is not selfish. It's retarded. <coughs> you know, I eat because I'm selfish. Myself has a need. I need to feed it. I'm, I, Lord, if I can give money to the church, why do I do that? could look at me or but even if I'm a holy righteous man why would I give stuff to the church because the Lord says so and why would I do something because the Lord said so they offer a reward because I'm going to get something out of it either Jesus loves me or I'm you know if you're I'm selfish alright um, I'm selfish because I don't drive down the left lane of the highway <laughs> alright you know, I'm sure one or two of y'all have been called selfish in your life. <laughs> right? But you're not selfish, you're retarded. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> in, this, in this sense, it's, I'm not trying to be critical. Because I'm guessing that typically those actions and behaviors that you were, people were labeled as selfish were not even intelligent in terms of getting your own needs met long term. I want to be happy, so I'm going to shoot heroin. Well, you're retarded. <laughs> Long term, I mean, it's fine for a minute. Um, but that's not getting you what your heart desires. There's nothing in you. The scripture said God delights in giving you the desires of your heart. Y'all ever read that? Heard that? If you ain't, just believe me. Yeah. There's nothing that you desire in your heart at its root that's unrighteous. Uh, your soul any more than it's unrighteous for if I'm I'm selfish because I keep breathing. Your soul needs air. Your soul needs nourishment. Your soul needs all these things. Many times, if you're on heroin, it's because you're dealing with your anxiety or you you know it's um, ganja guy over there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with not wanting to be anxious. 
Actually, that's what Jesus said. You were trying to do what Jesus said, right? <laughs> Don't be anxious for nothing. So, cool, bro. I ain't anxious. I'm doing what? And even my son told me God gave us every herb of the field. And so, yeah. <laughs> so, <all right>. That's good. <laughs> and. I mean, I don't, God ain't mad at you for shooting heroin. I say this every week. He ain't. What, what drugs was you doing? Me? Yeah. Oh, yes. Shooting uh, So similar to the heroin kind of deal? Yeah. Okay. Just trying to chill out? Yeah, just trying to chill. Huh. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. That's righteous. That's what you need to do. And if you could live the life that your soul was satisfied with by doing that, I would encourage you to keep doing it. Okay? I think God would rather you be at peace than not. Ultimately. The thing is, um, for the most part, I don't think our soul will allow us to be satisfied with living that way. Or we wouldn't be dissatisfied or bored or in trouble over and over and over again. You know? But you have to do stuff that seems stupid. I mean, the, the spiritual paradigm is, is basically a paradox. If you would be wise, what must you do first? Come as a fool. Or understand that I don't know nothing. Because if I think I know anything or know everything, then I'm most foolish. It is only because I, if I know everything, there ain't no room for no more stuff in there. And I'll keep doing the same old stuff. But if I go, well, Till, you're retarded. I didn't even know I didn't even know that. That's kind of, you know. And, and the ego opens up a little bit and there's room for some new knowledge, new understanding in there. But faith will take you through these times when your feelings will fail you. Because it's not just about not doing oxys anymore. So many times in a rehab setting, our whole vision of ourselves is to get clean and go out and live a productive life in our system that we have. And to me, that's just another form of addiction. Because our system is basically creates slaves. White ones, black ones, Mexican ones. We're all slaves. Yeah. I mean, just by definition. The whole country's in debt to the international bankers. And if you took every asset and every penny of everybody, you couldn't pay off the debt. You know? I don't think God's will for you is to get out of here and just become a productive citizen. I think God's will for you is to begin to wake up. Even if you're of the mindset that Paul says to obey authority. You know. Um, and generally that's probably a good thing. But there was at least one time Paul said, or they wouldn't have killed him. I don't think Paul said, been over and take it. He said, as best you can, get along with everybody. You know, don't go around being stupid. <laughs> uh, Jesus wasn't a, really an a authority obeyer. He pissed them all off. The bankers and the religious people and the politicians. You know, called them out in front of everybody. You know. Does that make any sense about what, 
your vision for yourself after you get here? It's not just go out and stay out of jail. <laughs> you know? Because pretty much the five day work week is uh, they let us out for a, d a day and a half. It's like work release kind of. <laughs> you get a day and a half off to go mow your yard and then come back and do all this stuff for this illusory thing we call money so we can keep everything. Yes, sir. Could you elaborate on what you mean by the wake up? Begin to understand you don't know everything. Start with. Um, begin to understand that uh, you and I don't even know what we don't even know yet. And that we're addicted to our ego and we think that's all who we are. And then there's a large part of ourself that seems to be um, opposed to what we say we want. And then we don't even spend no time trying to figure out what that's about. We read, you know what I'm saying? It, for some folks, it would be a mystical or a meditative kind of thing. Um, because even good conservative Christians think God's a Republican. <laughs> or a Democrat, depending on what kind of Christian you are, you know. <laughs> When according to the both the religion, it says the world system was run by the devil. <laughs> so, that kind of waking up. Because that's the kind of woke up that Jesus that got him killed. It wasn't just be good, be nice, don't say shit, and Jesus will come get you one day. Jesus didn't say, y'all just hang out and be nice, and then one day I'll come back and sprinkle magic dust from these colored eggs from you, and it'll be all right. He said, take up your cross and follow me. Do what I did. And the first thing he did after he got baptized was go out in the desert and look the devil in the eye. That's the thing we keep skipping. I won't talk about your damn devils. You know? I think probably after Paul had his experience when he met Jesus, he got blinded, didn't he? Yep. The guy that thought he knew everybody, everything. Couldn't even see. And I think he spent the next three years looking at the devil in the mirror that was in him. Because he didn't run out and start preaching to everybody. He did not. I think you can't understand Paul till you understand that all his writings begin with his very acute awareness of his own depravity and his need, desperate need for grace. Because more times than not, what I hold against people or I can't forgive is part of me that I'm just like that. Because when I figure out I'm just as capable of evil as who did evil to me, because when I figure that out, that I'm, I'm capable of a lot of evil, then I can give other folks a lot of room. But when I have this victim mentality that's they did it to me and that's why. And, yeah. But aren't we just like the children of Israel who it says, you know, they beg God 400 years, come help us, come help us, come help us. Moses gets there and they go, who the hell are you? Mm -hmm. And then they go through all these plagues and stuff and, um, and I think God had to do the plagues not only for the uh, Pharaoh but for the people of Israel to get them motivated. And then after they get free and they're multi-bajillionaires because they said they spoiled the Egyptians, they get out in the desert three days and go, you tricked us, it's hot out here. 